Welcome back to Precalculus. We're going to go over uh, some vector examples, and there's really, I've broken it down into four key example types. Um, number one, converting from component form to magnitude and direction. Number two, converting from magnitude and direction to component form. So this is going back and forth. You see component form is there and there, magnitude and direction there and there. Right? So those two, pretty basic, um, especially the second one, I'd say, is the most basic. And then three and four are usually in the context of word problems, but they're not too bad. You just have to know the technique. So number three, finding the angle between two vectors given the magnitude of the original vectors and also the magnitude of the resultant vector. Of course, we're going to do examples of all these. And the fourth one, given the magnitude and direction of multiple vectors, We'll do as many as three, two or three. Uh, find the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. So it might be kind of hazy in your mind, but now that we kind of know the instructions, I'm not going to have to write it again. I'm just going to label these as one, two, three, and four. So we're going to do two like number one. So we'll do one A and one B. So one A is going to give you a vector one, six, and we're going to convert it. This is the component form. We're going to convert it to magnitude and direction. So how do we find the magnitude of a vector? Well, we've talked about that. It's this like Pythagorean theorem. And so the magnitude of u is a square root of 37. And let's just leave it like that. Well, you we have to do magnitude and direction. Don't forget one or the other. Um, I kind of gave you an easy one on this one. Um, you know, I'm going to make this negative 6. Not going to really affect much. Uh, it's really not going to affect our answer on the magnitude at all. But just to be thorough, I'm going to rewrite this with a negative. Doesn't do anything, though. But that negative will make this a bit more interesting. Um, so that's our magnitude. How do we get direction? This is probably the hardest, most... Uh, problematic portion of, of these examples. Um, we'll, we'll see this come up in a couple of different cases, though. So what I would do is draw the vector. So u goes 1 to the right and 6 down. So it looks like that. That's u. 1 to the right and 6 down. And you can see, actually, drawing this might be a good idea before you do the magnitude. You can see how we did the Pythagorean theorem on that. But to get the the direction, we want this angle um, here. Well, we want, um, we could find this angle here, but ultimately we want to find, uh, let's see if I can draw this a little better. We want to find the angle here. Okay. So if we call that phi, I want phi. So get phi, maybe you can see what happens. We need to do phi um, equals 360 minus theta. So once you get theta, 360 minus it, and you'll get phi. Do you see where that comes from? You also might be able to see that phi plus theta is 360. And maybe that helps you to go from there to here because phi is most of the way around, a little over 270, and then theta takes it back up to 360. So theta and phi together add to be 360. In other words, phi is 360 minus theta. So we need to find theta. Subtract it from 360, got our answer. We're going to expect something around 300 degrees. So we would need a tangent, which you're going to use on every one of these kind of problems. Tangent of the unknown theta is 6 over 1. And I'm going to get a calculator. So uh, I'm getting 80.54 degrees. So therefore, phi is 279.46 degrees. So it seems like maybe they want us to do bearings, but they just don't. We don't really do bearings on these for some reason. So, um, well, I guess they're not necessarily 
on the map, but uh, these are not bearing problems. Let's do another one like that. So 1b, let's say our vector is now v, negative 4i minus 8j. A lot of times you're going to see I'm going to do an example with i and j, an example without the ij. So here's my ij example. You know what, let's, let's go ahead and sketch it first. So I went 4 to the left, 8 down. I can find that angle, theta. What's my phi going to be? So you started here and you went 4 left and 8 down, right? My phi is going to be the angle from the positive x-axis right there. So phi is... 180 plus theta. <laughs> Getting this phi is one of the trickier things. Okay, well let's let's uh, run through the process here to get this to get our magnitude. No big deal on that. That means 16 plus 64. Square root of 80. 16 goes in there five times, so we end up with four radical five is our magnitude, okay? And direction, we're gonna need a tangent again. Tangent of theta is eight over four. Now you might notice I ignore the negatives. I got the, I tell, I tell, I got the negatives taken care of. I don't wanna put, you put negatives in there, you're gonna get negative angles, and you have to deal with all that. Um, so I just wanna do, I don't wanna deal with that. Second tangent, eight fourths. This, I'm getting 63.43 degrees. But I don't want theta, I want phi. So phi is 180 plus that. Because phi will get us from this positive x-axis to there in 180. And then it has to go theta more. So it's 243.43 degrees. So the direction is not a bearing. We're not doing bearings right now. We will at some point, but in this context, we're just doing the positive angle measured from the uh, positive x-axis. So that is the first type. We may not get through all four of these in this video. Type two. This is probably the easiest type though. Um, the easiest of the four type of problems we're talking about. So. We want to be given the component form, given magnitude and direction. And I was nice to you on this one. Um, no work needed on this. Do you see what it is? This is saying um, go at a 90 degree, degree angle, straight vertical, five units. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Um, let's try, that's A we'll call it. Let's try another. This is saying, go straight left, three units. Well, that is that, right? Straight left because 180 degree angle that's measured from the positive x-axis that's going to take us straight to the left now if you have something not quite as nice like the magnitude is 8 and the angle is maybe like um, I don't know 29 degrees almost a nice 30 but not quite okay I used to teach this by drawing it and all this stuff and using some trig and, but no more of that um, what I've decided to do is just do what you're going to do. Now that we're done with the memorization portion of the course, you're going to use your calculator on these, you know, physics class or something. So actually, I'm going to draw it the first time. So we are going 8 at a 29-degree angle. And they're asking for the component form. So what is that in the X? What is that in the Y? I'm going to do it the long way one time, but then never again. Um, to get x, 
I think I need a cosine, right? Cosine of 29 degrees is adjacent over hypotenuse, x over 8. So x is 8 cosine 29 degrees. We'll get through that in a moment. To get y, we need to use sine. Sine 29 degrees is y over 8, or y is 8 sine 29 degrees. So the component form is simply whatever we get, and we plug that in. Now you might know, if you had some physics, that you probably learned that the x component of a vector is always with cosine, and the y is always with sine. And that is true as long as your angle is measured off the horizontal, which in this section it will. Which is weird because bearings we measure off the vertical. So yeah, I didn't make this up, but it's, it can be confusing. So yeah, we type this in our calculator, 8 cosine 29. That is 6.9, oh, 6.99. 7 and 8 sine 29, 3.878, but we don't usually round, we usually round to two decimals, so it's 7.00 and 3.88. That would be the uh, component form. Let's just throw one more in there. And then we'll actually do our last two in the next video. Let's say our magnitude is 17 and our direction is 333 degrees. Yeah, you could draw this. It looks something like that, you know, um, where this has a length of 17. This angle right here is 333 degrees. You could figure out in the fourth quadrant, who's positive, who's negative, but here's what you can do instead. You don't need to draw this anymore. You can just do this. We've learned that this is magnitude cosine of the angle, magnitude sine of the angle. That will always work. As long as the angle is measured from the positive x-axis, which it should be in this section, it will be. That will get you the answer. You could worry, oh no. How is it going to know if it's plus or minus? It knows. It knows that a cosine in the fourth quadrant will be positive. That should be positive. It knows that sine in the fourth quadrant should be negative. That should be negative. Let's see what we get. 17 cosine 333 is 15.15, and it is positive. 17 sine 333 is negative 7.72. It's negative, it knows. And you can even look at this picture. As I said, you don't need it. You can tell the x should be bigger in magnitude than the y, and that's true. Okay, so those are very important.